All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a look at these knives. And this is another video thanks to my friend Dan. Dan picked these knives up and I didn't get any of this run of H10 knives. So uh, he was kind enough to loan these for me to show off. So I really appreciate it. As always, Dan has loaned a lot of knives for me to make videos. Uh, so if you've enjoyed the content, it's in, in definitely large part especially recently thanks to Dan uh, getting really into knives and allowing me to make videos so I really really appreciate it as always if you enjoy this type of content make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you know when I post new videos and uh, you can also check out my social media I'm on Instagram and Facebook at knife thoughts and my website if I can get it out of here knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like this and knife related topics but Let's move on to the knives themselves. As you can see, this is two versions of the Great Eastern Cutlery H10-121. So that means that it is the H10 model. It has a clip point blade, which is the one designation, and it was made in 2021. So these are both relatively small traditional fixed blades. You can see that there is a marrow bone handled version and a kingwood handled version. And they both come with really nice, really classic leather sheaths with cool tolling that, that has these acorns and leaves that go along with the Great Eastern Cutlery branding. These sheaths are really nice. They uh, add to the knife, I think, in, in a way that that is adds to the traditionality, traditionality of the knife because they are such classic sheaths. They're leather, they're solid, thick leather, as you can see. They're not tactical. They're not meant to be able to get this knife out super quickly necessarily or put it away super quickly. But, it, you know, if you want it to, to look good, look traditional, look classic, have that nice look to it like it's a quality handmade American-made knife, the sheaths do help. Um, Speaking of the knives now, take both of these out. One thing to be aware of with gradation cutlery knives is when you see them in the sheath, you won't see the acorn. The acorn is actually covered because this is traditionally the way that a, a traditional fixed blade would be displayed uh, in, in this orientation. But when they're in the sheath, that's covered by the, the, the sheath itself. So that's why you don't see that shield, which is only on the Kingwood, being that this is marrow bone. But a lot of other Great Cutlery fixed blades have the, a shield, and it's usually not, you know, able to be seen when the knife is in the sheath. Now, one thing that I want to mention right off the bat with these knives, these are GEC branded knives. Great Eastern Cutlery uses several different brands. They make for other brands or have in the past made for other brands, but they use Titus, uh, Titiute, which is kind of their <clears throat> normal brand, their kind of baseline, I guess you'd say. And then they make um, the Farm and Field, which is kind of the, the working, the budget, the the user knife brand and then they also make northfield which is the higher end with the fancier touches and things like that and then they make gec or self-branded which for a long time were known as the knives that were stainless but that's not really the case exactly uh there can be knives that are gec branded that are not stainless and these are examples of that these as you can see are carbon steel knives so these are not stainless, even though they are branded GEC rather than Titiute or Northfield. So I want to get that out of the way right off the bat. Uh, they have made stainless fixed blades, but these from this run are not stainless. Now, the first thing I want to talk about here, aside from the steel, is the handles. Uh, the Kingwood is something that I, I've never really had or seen in person before. And it has a, a very striped look to it, especially on this side, you can see. I have to say that I'm not the biggest fan of the look of it, but um, some people really like this kind of striped grain on wood. There is some, some leftover either um, you know, for, for stabilizing the wood or just glue right there. So a uh, little bit of a flaw, but 
definitely, I think it is probably glue from gluing this on. You can see that there's a little bit there also. But definitely something that if you like that kind of long grain, it, it definitely has that. Not my favorite, but, you know, to each their own. The marrow bone, on the other hand, I think is really, really cool. It is um, very, very character. It has a lot of character to it. And I think that it looks and feels actually pretty good in the hand. Your, or at least my hand, it sits in this groove, this pretty thick groove here, and you get a good grip on it. Now, speaking of that, you can see that my hand really kind of engulfs this handle here. These are not big knives. These are, these are some of the smaller GEC fixed blades. And because of that, I actually like the handle a little better. On the bigger version of this knife, this guard kind of sticks up high enough that you can't really do this without it hitting your thumb. Whereas on these, you know, you can get your thumb on the spine of the knife and not have it hitting this guard. So I actually think that I like this smaller version a little better because of this super, super simple minimalist handle. It is a good ergonomic handle also. You know, if you watch my channel, I think that a simple handle makes for an ergonomic handle, and that is definitely the case here. Uh, I also like the look of the, the dye on this marrow bone. It's kind of a classic brownish color, but it, it looks good to me. Um, and then the blade, moving on to the blade. Now, one thing is sometimes these aren't fitted super, super perfectly. You can see there's some space between this area and the guard. I don't really think this area is necessary. It's a traditional shape for the knife and, and you know, it kind of holds that guard on and everything. But I think that, that it might be a little better to change that. I mean, I'm not a knife engineer, even if I'd like to be. Um, but, you know, it's something where sometimes those aren't fitted quite as well. This one is fitted really well. This one is not quite as perfectly fitted, but the blade is a really classic clip point. You can see it has a drawn swedge. It has a nice straight area, then, you know, a belly and a pretty usable tip too. So this would work for, you know, normal tasks that clip points work for, which is pretty much everything. It's also ground really well. These fixed blades are ground to cut. I will tell you what, it, it, I hope you can see it. These are ground nice and thin, which is good, really good on a knife this size. It would be frustrating if it was thickly ground because a knife this size, you wanna be able to slice. And I think that this knife would work really well as a hunting knife. I think that you could definitely use this to skin and process game as well as other outdoor tasks. It's not a super small knife. It's, it's big enough that you could do most things with it, uh, but it is small compared to GEC's other Fixed blades in general, they have some ones that are a little smaller, but I actually like these a lot. I didn't get one because I have a lot of fixed blades, didn't think I needed one. I do kind of wish I had gotten one of these marrow bone ones because I really like the look of it. But like uh, all GECs, these sold really quickly. For a long time, GEC fixed blades would sit on shelves even when the folders would fly off shelves and they'd sell out immediately. The fixed blades would not, but now the fixed blades do also. So um, you got to get them, get them when you can. <laughs> and I didn't, but I appreciate Dan allowing me to check them out. Uh, even though it makes me a little jealous sometimes of some of the knives, I, it's super helpful for the channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I'm glad that he's enjoying these knives that I love so much. Uh, so again, thank you to Dan. If you've enjoyed this video, it's in large part due to Dan allowing me to check them out. And uh, like I said, mentioned at the beginning, make sure you check out my other, you know, pages, my social media and my website. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And as always, don't forget to go out and do good.